Islam. They wanna know about Islam? We'll give them that one. They wanna know what a Muslim does? We'll give them that one. When they wanna hate on our deen? We'll give them that one. Then, kun feridan, ish bi fakhirin fil haya, la tubali. I wouldn't mind debating you after him. But he never rebuked Thomas when he said, "My Lord and my God." Yeah, he also worshipped one God. What about that, Jesus? In regards to Trinity, yeah, you're making two families of arguments. Families. Two families of arguments. Okay. Both of which are wrong. Both, both of which are wrong. The first family of arguments okay. you are making, the first family of arguments that you are making, is essentially referring to statements that Jesus said, or referring to statements which are about Jesus mm -hmm. in the New Testament. Yeah. Using them, you are saying Jesus is denying his divinity. And the statements you gave as examples there are, you are my God, my God, my God, and similar statements. Yeah. John 17, 3. Where Jesus said, you are the only true God. The only true God, yeah. and so on. Not You're referring the, to such statements, the and using them and them alone, you are suggesting that Jesus is rejecting his own divinity. And that is wrong. I'd like to address that in detail. Go on. And the second family. The, the second. I'll deal with you after him, if you don't mind. Now you're interrupting him. You're interrupting him. I'll interject whenever I want to interject. That's what. That's what Speaker's Corner is about. That's what. Nobody will deal with me. There you go. The second family of argument. Yeah. In regards to Trinity, that you are advancing seems to be the Old Testament does not have any clue about the Trinity. Again, this is blatantly wrong, demonstrably wrong. Go Both on. of Show these us. families are completely wrong. I'd like to get to that. There's no Trinity in the Bible anyway. There's no. You be Thank you very much. Trinity. It's called <laughs> the God name. The doctrine of Trinity came so, from the Catholic Church. So, so, so you shouldn't, you shouldn't really be using that word. So, 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 so you made those points also. Yeah. And, and I'd like to get into the details of those those arguments in a couple of minutes, please. Prior to that, you said Yahweh doesn't exist in the New Testament, which is a bit interesting because Jesus himself was Yahweh who saves, Yeheshua. His own name is Yeheshua. Yahweh shows up as the central character in the New Testament. Why would you say Yahweh doesn't show up in the New Testament? I'm not sure. Because it's not there. Yahweh is not there. I didn't ask Yahshua. The name Yeheshua, which is Jesus, translated into English as Jesus, is in itself Yahweh who saves. That's the name. And therefore, when we use the term Jesus, as long as we are willing to dig in a bit to the detail, we know obviously Yahweh is there. But it doesn't stop there. Jesus himself refers to himself as Ego Emi. I am. Before Abraham was, I am. It's again a reference to him being Yahweh. But that's a minor point. It's not. But carry on. This current state, carry on. this current discussion, that's a minor yeah. point. Let me correct you. It's a reference to him being the Son of God and him being one with his Father. Can I? He doesn't claim, Jesus never claims to be the Almighty Father. So, I mean, I'm yeah. interested to clarify. Well, I, I well, disagree with that. I disagree with that. No. The Father has his own name to be, the Son has It's good to, see the, I, I, good to see the Christians disagreeing with each other. Now, now, in regards to. So now the Christians are disagreeing, wow. Well, he might have to he clarify, slightly. Um, Wait, he disagrees, so you should respect that. Well, that's fine. Christians, we discuss debate. No <laughs> yeah, go on. Now, going to the two families of arguments you are advancing. Yeah. Jesus saying, He is my only true God. Scriptures makes it quite clear. What I'd suggest to you is a very simple thing, which is I'd ask you to explore in the New Testament, and there are references in the New Testament about how. The Father calls Jesus. I'd like you to explore that when you go home. You are sticking on to only the way the Son calls the Father. Of course I agree and I appreciate the Son called the Father his God. I appreciate that. But scriptures, New Testament equally is also clear that the Father himself calls the Son as God. Very important, not just as God, as my God. That's a reference in the New Testament, which is a homework for you, for you to explore. Which was? Was a reference? I'd like you to read. I've seen it before, but if you give the reference for the audience, if you don't mind. I'd like you to find out and read, please. Oh, really? It would be hard for you. I know it already. At the least, at the least, 
you could stumble upon a few different verses when you do that. Yeah. So the point is it <coughs> when Jesus says he is my God, it does not negate the fact that the Father calls Jesus my God. Very important. Uh, so now in regards to Trinity, my brother very correctly said that I'm not supposed to use the term Trinity and I'm, I don't agree with him on that. But let's say the matter of our discussion is not on the term Trinity but on the idea of three persons in one God. That is what we are talking about and I'm sure we understand that. So it's not about the term Trinity. Of course Trinity and anything else which we are quoting right now is in English. Of course we are talking about New Testament which was written in Greek and most likely was communicated in Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic and so on. So, coming, coming to... I just want to ask you, the term which God used, I'm no expert when it comes to Hebrew, but the term which God used when he said, let us make man in our image, it was a, 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 some, a I think it's called a pluralistic masculine term. It's a plural, God says, that God was talking to somebody, he said, let, let us make man in our image. So there was somebody there with God, let, let us do it together. So Sir, if you don't know Hebrew, I suggest you don't wait, mention wait, that, because they will laugh at you. Wait, wait, wait. I know the grammar of that word you just quoted no, as a we. No, no, no one would laugh at the, the point fact you made. The, the point is, that is very valid. It, it's a no, if, you're, if you don't know something, it's wait. best not to speak about it. No, you no, said no, you don't know Hebrew and uh, mention you, you something. You no, that's a pronunciation. But you're doing the same that's thing, the no, irony of it. You're Henry, quoting from the Henry, New Testament. One one second. You're cherry picking Why are you all triggered? Calm down. You think you know Christianity. Why are you triggered? You don't nothing about Why are you Calm down. I'll take you on next, don't worry. You believe this portion, but you don't believe what Jesus said. He's the son of God. It's to expose you guys. That's hypocrisy. No wonder you're triggered. That's cherry picking. No wonder you're triggered. Two families of arguments. If the first family of argument, which I'd like to do. You know, this is... Sorry, go ahead. Two families of arguments. The first family is Jesus in the New Testament. There are multiple very important points which we haven't spoken about so far in Hyde Park as far as I know which make the point that Jesus is claiming equality with the Father blatantly, demonstrably clear well, speak then. especially in the eyes of the first century Jews. Now is a chance. I'd like to speak just about give it. two examples for them. Just two examples. Okay. There are plenty more which I reserve for a very dedicated conversation about Trinity itself for later. Just no two as a flavor. Point number one, when on the day of the final judicial process, when Pontius, when the chief priest asked Jesus, asked Jesus to tell plainly, and he said this, Ashim, he said, he said this to Jesus, he said, tell us plainly, are you the Christ, the son of the living God? That was the confession the high priest, the first century religious leader wanted Jesus to make if that, if that was true. Jesus said, yes, it is as you say. The moment he mentioned that, unlike a 21st century Muslim, unlike a 21st century Muslim, or a Jew. The high priest did not, maybe a Jew, <laughs> the high priest did not go around saying, oh, let's leave him alone. He is merely claiming to be a son we know even Adam was a son, so no problem at all. That's not what the first century Jewish religious top-notch high priest said. He rather said blasphemy. In other words, very, very unlike the interpretation of people like you and many other Muslims and Jews, some of them at least, in the 21st century, the first century high priest has a completely different interpretation of Jesus' claim that he was the son of the living God. According to the first century Jew, that is claiming equality with the father. Very blatant, very demonstrable. I don't want you to nod your head anyway around there. I don't, John like, seven and three. I don't want your opinions on this. I'd like to rely upon the first century Jewish top-notch religious leaders comment <coughs> on this. On. And this is precisely why the Bible says Jews at a few different points in time when Jesus referred to the one in heaven as his father immediately did not say, oh, he is just claiming to be a son. We know Adam was a son, we know David was a son, and therefore no problem. That's not what they said. They immediately picked up stones to stone him to death. That's just one flavor. 
for Jesus blatantly claiming equality with the Father in the eyes, not of you. I don't care what you think. I didn't say anything. I don't care. No, I'm not saying you said something. I'm just telling you, I don't care what your opinions are about this. I'm just going back to the Jesus first century Jewish John religious interpretation of that particular statement. That's point number one. Just to give you a flavor. Okay. Another very important flavor. In the Old Testament, Joseph became a big shot because he began interpreting the dreams. The most crucial interpretation of Joseph, Joseph, which made him a huge guy, was the interpretation of the dream of the Pharaoh of that time. This is what happened. After Joseph interpreted the dream, dream the Pharaoh said, you are just like me in my kingdom. You are just like me, equal to me in everything, in everything, apart from one thing, apart from one thing, in everything you are equal to me. And just to remind you that one thing in which the Pharaoh was higher than Joseph and that was the throne. So it is common understanding when people say, you are equal to me even on the throne that what is claimed there is complete equality, holistic equality. And by equality, I'm not talking about uniformity. And that is a crucial point the brother raised. I appreciate and agree that the son is a distinct person like the father. I'm not claiming they are uniform. They're just the same. It's not my claim. My claim rather is they are equal. It's pretty much like if I had 10 pound note in one of my hands, two five pound notes in another of my hands, they both are equal in the value of what they are supposed to represent. Equal. That's what I'm talking about. And the throne is equal to the Father in the Old Testament is also demonstrably true. The beginning of which was the point my brother raised, um, my brother raised uh, maybe five, ten minutes ago, which is in regards to the name Elohim. Elohim is demonstrably a plural word, which some of you, I think was that Muhammad, I think was his name, who in one of the uh, uh, debates he had conveniently ignored, gave his own interpretation of this and that and what not, claimed that was supposed to be uh, 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 plural of respect and all sorts of weird things.